you know you should never ever run your K4D laser without any water cooling, as these machines are designed to bend space-time continuum and explode when you do so. No, luckily not. Three times in the past three years I forgot to turn on the pump. Luckily it always took my brain around five seconds to realize that something was wrong. Uh, what is not too bad considering my brain has a constant stock overflow. Now in order to prevent this from happening again in the future and to avoid burning a hole through my man cave similar to the energy sphere in the movie Explorers, I decided to build something and hopefully, well at least I try, to show you how you can build a little device that prevents this from happening, uh, even you never used an Arduino board before. And as I reached 8000 subscribers in the last week, what is incredibly awesome, seriously, you guys are awesome! I will do a giveaway to my subscribers and to my non-existing patrons. How to participate, um, I will tell you at the end of this video. This project is not too complicated, but still I would say that it requires some very basic knowledge of electronics and soldering. Therefore I give it a 5 on my scale from 1 to 10 cavemen for its complexity. Now let's first start by farming some parts. So these Arduino Nano boards come with those little headers here and we have to solder this in place. So I clamp everything down into the breadboard and uh, simply solder it. There is not much you can do wrong. Um, the spacing and holes, they are all pre-made, so you just stick this together and solder it. Now this is a flow rate hell sensor. Not hell, but hell with A. Uh, what this is, this is basically uh, this metal pipe connector with a three quarter inch thread on both sides. Uh, how this works is quite simple. There is a uh, little impeller inside with uh, some magnets uh, attached to the spinning part. Uh, when the impeller rotates to some, uh, to some liquid that passes through it, uh, it inducts a tiny little current. Now we can count these impulses using some sort of circuitry uh, with some code. Uh, we then can translate these impulses to liters per minute and display this data on an LCD display. Now, um, no worries, I will already took care of all the coding stuff, um, the most complicated part. Now to fit my 8mm hose, where do I have it? Here. Uh, coming from the laser to this device, I 3D printed me uh, some hose adapters that can also be found in your local home improvement store. But as I was too lazy to leave the house, so, um, I printed them, um, what took way more time. But well, I'm lazy. Second data source will be a thermistor, sensing the temperature of the cooling liquid. In my case, I got me one with a threaded metal plug that fits into uh, my flow indicator. And yes, I already have a flow indicator, but still I messed it up three times forgetting turning on the pump um, because it's just a piece of plastic that rotates and sometimes you just don't have the eye for it uh, or on it. And um, yeah, you just forget it. If you don't have uh, a flow indicator thingy, uh, an alternative is a simple pre-wired thermistor. You can buy also on Amazon or on eBay. Um, that you can simply dunk into um, your cooling broth reservoir, as I did until now. Now, a thermistor basically um, is a resistor that changes resistance with temperature. To hook this up and read out data from it, we need to build a voltage divider um, and some more code to translate the resistance data into degrees centigrade or Fahrenheit. Now, this is a 10 kilo ohm thermistor. This value is quite important when you order one um, to make this work, as I measured the resistance of this thing at 0 degrees Celsius and 100 degrees Celsius. Uh, with both values we can now write some code that translates the resistance values into degrees centigrade or Fahrenheit. Would you buy a 100k thermistor, these values would be off. So watch out ordering the right one. Secondly, I need to write some code. Uh, third, I need uh, to write some code that works. Fourth, I need help to write some code that works. Uh, fifth, I don't get any help and wrote a code that actually works. Hi. Hi, my name is Ed. 
Now we have all our parts together. Now how does all this work? Well, the Adreno counts the revolutions of the flow meter and translates these values into liters per minute. What then gets displayed on this simple um, two-line LCD? Um, which you also get from Amazon. As long the flow rate lies over one liter per minute, this relay um, stays closed, so the laser switch is activated. If the flow rate drops below this threshold, the relay opens and cuts the power from um, the laser switch. At this point, it doesn't matter if the laser switch actual um, on the machine is actually pushed or not, the laser tube just turns off. Now, you will ask why one liter? Um, well, that's simply because there are different pumps out there, uh, different flow rates, uh, so you can tweak this threshold in software by simply changing um, this value um, to the amount of flow rate um that you think becomes critical. Of course, you can add some more code to this. Uh, for example, um, to set a critical temperature where the laser should turn off. Now, if you never worked with an Arduino board or a developer board before, uh, it basically is a little board that has a processor on it and multiple digital and analog inputs and outputs. Uh, you write a code in software and uh, send it over to the board via USB. When the program got copied, the Arduino board automatically starts executing this program when a current is applied, um, if everything Thing is correct obviously. Download the files from my page, download the free Arduino software, load the Arduino file that you downloaded from my web page into the Arduino software. Now uh, there's one more thing you need to do. As we are using a generic cheap LCD display, we need to tell our Arduino board how to communicate with it. Okay, every resource the software needs is listed here. Um, it is declared as include. This are little programs that run basically in the background. All um, this might sound complicated, uh, but don't worry, it really isn't. Simply select the name without the quotation marks, then uh, copy it, go to tools, manage libraries, paste the name in here, and uh, well, you have to wait a little, and uh, simply choose the right one, the one um, you just uh, pasted in there, and click install. Um, Adreno now downloads um, the selected program and installs it into the software. This uh, takes some seconds and then we are ready to go. You now click on the verify button up here and it will compile this to a file our developer board or Adreno board can read and execute. Uh, if all is fine down here, it now says done compiling. Next would be to upload this file to the Adreno Nano board. You don't have to write or change anything in this code, it should be all ready to go. But if you are in the US, as most of my viewers, uh, you can change degrees centigrade to degrees Fahrenheit down here. Uh, simply swap TC with the characters TF and down here the C with an F. The display now will show you the temperature in degrees Fahrenheit. Okay, now hook up the board via the USB cable. Check uh, you have chosen the right USB port and Adreno board up here under Tools, Board and Port. Um, in this case, the, it is an Adreno Nano. Then click on Port and here you will see a number. This number will be different on every computer depending on how much USB devices you have connected to this. Now we click up here on Compile and Upload. This takes a second, et voila! And now you can watch me breaking my neck by um, wiring everything together. Now it looks like a nice Italian dish, but my circuitry should be ready. Everything should be hooked up. Let's plug it in and see what happens. And we have our Welcome screen and you see that the relay just switched for once and now it says pump error. In this case that's a good thing, that means that theoretically my code works because for now um, obviously there is no flow rate going on. So of course we have a pump error, we don't have any flow in our cooling system. The relay indicates that with a red LED and it says that um, the relay opened the circuit so um, the laser is off. Now, this is a double acting relay and you see this here. You can rather solder on one or the other side depending on you want um, the relay to be open or closed in a non-powered state. In this case, when there is no power applied, we want this to be open to cut the power to our laser tube. So this is right for now. And uh, as I don't have any pump right now to uh, check on the flow meter, I, I will simply blow into this thing and um, we will see that uh, the relay board will switch open and it will turn on the green LED 
and we will have an indication of temperature and flow rate uh, on our display. And by the way, I have red fingers because I just experimented with some fake blood powder um, for another project. Uh, let's try this out. Let's blow into this. And you see, it works. Pretty neat. Now we can go from here and solder everything directly to the Arduino board um, using the schematics that I put on my webpage. But I thought, well, I could try something that makes it look way better and more cool and also way easier to assemble. So I designed a PCB, my first PCB. And uh, with the magic of time travel, this is what I have here. As I said, this is my first PCB, so please remain friendly in the comment. And no, I am not sponsored by them in any way. <laughs> this is just coming in a nice box with their logo on it. Um, for those people who are subscribed to Big Life, um, probably know what this is underneath. Um, but this is for a private project. So these are the PCBs I ordered. And they come vacuum sealed. Can you hear a hiss? No hiss. As you can see, everything is nicely labeled, so it should be a manageable task to solder in the components. Even this is your first or second electronics project ever, I uploaded everything you need to know to my webpage. There you will find the schematic, the layout, the code, the laser file for the housing, and even the zip file that contains everything a PCB manufacturer needs to know to print your own PCB and send it to your home. Uh, or you participate in this giveaway, because I will give away seven of these PCBs at the end of this video. But I must confess there are two problems with my PCB and I found out about while they were made. So it was too late to cancel the order. <laughs> the main issue is a dumb beginner's failure <laughs> and I'm so ashamed about it. I don't know if you can see it already. Well, uh, I swap positive and negative for the LCD. What results in fixing these problems with botch wires? No worries, I uh, corrected this issue already in the layout and the downloadable zip file, so you should be good to go. For uh, you who is winning a PCB uh, as a giveaway, I botch wired them already, so you are good to go as well. Another minor problem is that I used the D0 port on the Arduino, what is also the RX port for the serial interfacing. If you are a beginner, you won't play around with this thing. Uh, but due to the port being occupied, I will no longer be able to use the um, software serial monitor to see actual data that comes in from the sensors. I will do my best now and put away my frustration and start by soldering in the components you piece of shit. it marked USB here so this means this is the USB port so it has to go in this way okay so I will snip off this connector here I of course could have um, laid out the board in a way that we could fit a um, connector but as I have three different connectors here and I think with three different diameters and pitches, I'm just snipping them off and I will solder in the cable right away. After some more hours of botch wiring and problem solving, I finally got everything together. I had to tweak and tweak some things in the code to make things work. And here is the final product. So let's plug this in for the first time. I have my, is it micro? No, it's mini USB. And we put this in here and it welcomes us with a little welcome text and it goes straight into the pump arrow, which is okay. So I will blow into this device here and uh, let's see if we get a reading and let's see if the relay works. And it works. Perfect. So what would be a man cave effects video without using our K40 laser? So let's go over to the laser and start the time-lapse montage. Ooh. 
Of course, also, um, this coral laser file for the housing can be downloaded on my webpage as well. Uh, last thing uh, to do is hook everything up. I mounted the flow sensor and hooked up the temperature sensor. The relay needs to be bridged between the laser switch. If you have the same power supply than I have, uh, by the way, I made a video about the pinouts to be sure, uh, you can wire it in here. If you don't, just follow the cable from the laser switch to, the laser, to your laser's power supply, or even just cut one of the two wires and splice the guard circuit in between. Et voila, let's test it out. And it works! Let's get to the giveaway for you guys. If you want one of these PCBs, I am giving away seven in total. No worries, I bridge wired them in a way that you can still fit in all the components without any issue and they work fine now. I will give away two to my Patreons and five to my subscribers. Only thing you need to do is like this video, subscribe to the channel and write I want one in the comments. I will draw a winner each day the first five days this video is online, so good luck! A shout out to Nicholas from France who contacted me the other day and showed me pictures of his masterpiece of K40 aficionadoism. Besides some pretty cool updates, um, he modded the whole unit to a professional great working horse. Using mostly 3D printed parts, uh, most of them can be found on Thingiverse where I also included the link in the description. Nice work, Nicholas. Maybe I will pass by the other day and we will have some beers and uh, have a closer look uh, of your mods. This rounds it up for this 8000 subscriber special. I, I hope you enjoyed. Uh, stay with me in the future for more videos, content and beers. Uh, please subscribe, ring the notification bell, give it, give it a thumbs up or thumbs down, make this thing take off even more. If this is the first time you're watching my videos, I put together a whole playlist of my K40 related videos called the K40 Encyclopedia playlist, of course. Check it out, let me know what you think. Until then, see ya!